Hello, I'm Dick Tapper in Washington, where the state of our union is softening, or maybe it's hardening. It's tough to tell. The stairway to heaven of Donald Trump's campaign, his biggest identifiable hit with his fans, his unapologetic, non-negotiable stance on undocumented immigrants needing to leave this country. Well, this week, Mr. Trump suggested it now might be negotiable. That's at least how many took it, including conservative supporters. Asked about those in the United States illegally who contribute to society, have kids here, and who are otherwise law-abiding, Mr. Trump said this. There certainly can be a softening because we're not looking to hurt people. We want people. We have some great people in this country. We have some great, great people in this country. This left many people asking if Mr. Trump had changed his position on the biggest issue of his campaign, arguably, his insistence during the primaries that all 11 million undocumented immigrants would be forced to leave or be removed from the U.S. Was he now suggesting some might be able to stay? Well, he told CNN this. There's no path to legalization unless they leave the country and come back. Yesterday in Iowa, Mr. Trump skirted the issue and focused directly on people here illegally who have committed other crimes. On day one, I'm going to begin swiftly removing criminal illegal immigrants from this country. Including removing the hundreds and thousands of criminal illegal immigrants that have been released into the United States. So what does this all mean? Let's get some clarity. Joining me now for an exclusive interview is Donald Trump's running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence. Governor Pence, good to see you again. Thanks, Jake. Good to see you. So let's start with this issue, the uh, estimated 11 or so uh, million undocumented immigrants currently in the United States. This is what Mr. Trump promised back in November. Take a listen. You're going to have a deportation force, and you're going to do it humanely Are and they going to be ripped out of their homes? Can I tell you? They're going back where they came. If they came from a certain country, they're going to be brought back to that country. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to be. So Mr. Trump has been saying that on day one, the violent undocumented immigrants will, be, will leave the country. But what about the rest? What happens to the other 11 or so million, however many there are? Will there be a deportation force? removing these individuals from the United States? Well, f first off, let's, let's be very clear. Nothing has changed about Donald Trump's position on dealing with illegal immigration. He put this issue at the center of this presidential campaign in the Republican primaries. And, and his position and his principles have been absolutely consistent. We're going to secure the border. We're going to build a wall, have a physical barrier. We're going to enforce the laws of this country, end sanctuary cities, uh, implement E-Verify. Uh, and we will have a mechanism uh, for dealing with people in this country that you heard the word humanely again. It's going to be fair. It's going to be tough. But there'll be no path to legalization, no path to citizenship unless people leave the country. He said that very consistently. The contrast with Hillary Clinton, who supports amnesty, open borders, who wants to implement executive amnesty again on mm -hmm. day one, even though the Supreme Court of the United States rejected it, and Hillary Clinton, who wants to increase refugees from the terrorist torn country of Syria by 550 percent. The choice yeah. could not be more clear for the American people. Ex Donald Trump has been completely consistent in his positions, Jake. Except on this issue, I understand everything you're saying there, but the one issue that you didn't really address is whether or not the 11 or 12 million undocumented immigrants will be removed by a deportation force, as you heard Mr. Trump saying in that clip from November of last year. Is that policy still operative? Well, what, what you heard him describe there uh, in his usual plain spoken American way was a mechanism, not a policy. I mean, you're going to hear more detail in the next uh, two weeks that lays out all the policies, but there will be no change in the principle here that Donald Trump wants uh, to, to make it clear to the American people that while Hillary Clinton is committed to open borders and amnesty and executive amnesty and, and more of the same that has really uh, harmed our economy and frankly, as he said, with regard to dangerous individuals in this country has cost American lives. You know, I, when I was in Iowa, I met with Sarah Root's family. Mm -hmm. uh, the heartbreak of Sarah Root's story and other stories of families whose children have lost their lives to people who are in this country, dangerous individuals who are caught up in this 
broken system and then escape justice as the man that claimed her life did. But it's I, going to end under an administration of Donald Trump. I, I get that the violent illegal immigrants will be removed from the country. But what, what I'm not hearing, and I'm wondering, for people out there, and look, it's not just the liberal media, right? It's also conservatives. It's Rush Limbaugh. It's Governor Sarah Palin. It's other people who want Donald Trump to win who are saying, wow, it sounds like he's really backing away from this deportation right. force, removing 11 million. And you're not saying right now, Governor, you're not saying, you're not pledging that there will be a removal of all undocumented immigrants. You're not saying that. No, what, what I'm saying, Jake, and what I've said to you a minute ago, and I want to be very clear, there will be no path to legalization, right. no path to citizenship. People that want to gain legal status, you heard Donald Trump say again and again, we'll have to leave the country. Right, but what about the millions in this country right now? Well, what happens to I them? I think Donald Trump will articulate what we do with the people who are here, but I promise you... Well, he already has articulated. Donald Trump is more concerned about the American people, American citizens, people who are here legally, people that are struggling in this economy. you got a family in Ohio, the, the dad is working two jobs and mom has a side job and they're trying to make ends meet. They haven't seen their real personal income go up in 10 to 15 years, and this flood of illegal immigration has contributed mightily to depressing wages in this country and denying jobs and opportunities to Americans. That's why so I'm Donald asking. Trump is going to focus. I know the media wants to focus on that one issue. Donald Trump will articulate a policy about how we deal with that population, but I promise you he is going to remain completely focused on American citizens what? and people who are here legally and how we get this country I don't understand working why, for people who play by the rules. I don't understand why... The f it's the fault of the media for focusing on an issue that you're yeah. crediting Donald Trump for bringing to the fore. Yeah. The idea is Mr. Trump won the primaries in no small way because he had this very forceful position saying all 11 or 12 million undocumented immigrants will be forced to leave the country. Now, you right this minute are not saying that that's the policy. Well, don't, you're saying he's yeah. going to be unveiling it in the next few weeks. It's 72 days until the election. Well, I, 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 you, the way you characterize his position is one thing. I think he's been completely... I just, we just ran the clip. Look, Jake, he's been completely consistent in the principles that he's articulated. Nobody was talking about illegal immigration when Donald Trump entered this campaign. He was attacked from day one for putting the whole issue of the violence that is derived from certain individuals that come into this country illegally on the table. He's made it clear, uh, we're gonna secure our borders, we're gonna build a wall, uh, we're gonna enforce the laws of this country, stand up and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. But what you see going on right now, and, and I think at a certain level it's very refreshing, because it's the Donald Trump that I see every day, is you see a CEO at work. Mm -hmm. You see someone who is engaging the American people listening to the American people. He's hearing from all sides. But I promise you, he is a decisive leader. He will stand on the principles that have underpinned his commitment to end illegal immigration in this country. Uh, and that's what people will learn more about in the days ahead. But, but let's be clear. Yeah. Hillary Clinton supports open borders, amnesty, and even wants to increase Syrian refugees to this country by 550%. You couldn't okay. have a more clear choice between Donald Trump and I, who will end illegal immigration in this country, and, and Hillary Clinton, who will pursue more of the same executive amnesty, open borders, which the American people are sick and tired of. To be clear, you did not address the issue about whether or not there will be a deportation force removing the 11 or 12 million, but I don't want to spend the entire interview on that one subject. Let's turn to the children born in the United States to undocumented immigrants. Donald Trump said last year that these, these children, it's about 4.5 million of them, are not citizens. Take a listen. I don't think they have American citizenship. We have to start a process where we take back our country. Our country is going to hell. Is it still the position of the Trump-Pence campaign that children born in this country, in this country, to undocumented immigrants, are not U.S. citizens? Well, I, I think the whole question of anchor babies, as it's known, the whole question of citizenship of natural born Americans is, is a subject for the future. I think the American people ought to ask, and we look at our whole immigration system and see whether or not that works and makes sense. But under the laws today in the United States of America, I think what Donald Trump was referring to is this is part of the issue that we need to deal with in this country. But mm -hmm. look, I, I, I have to tell you, he is, a, he is a man who speaks his mind, and he has put this issue front and center with the American people. And I have to tell you, I, I, I know how the media loves to come in 
and loves to you know divide the issues and and frankly I, I think not you personally Jake but a lot like to see if they can drive wedges between people that support Donald Trump yeah. the truth of the matter is as I'm traveling across the country uh, and and with Donald Trump and for Donald Trump the American people hear him loud and clear Hillary Clinton's committed to amnesty and open borders and more of the policies that have harmed our economy, harmed American families, and in some cases resulted in tragedy, Donald Trump is absolutely committed to securing our borders, having e verify system, standing by the Constitution, and, and reforming the immigration system in a way that works for American families. I want to turn to Hillary Clinton and some of the really tough charges going back and forth between your campaign and her campaign. She said this week Donald Trump is helping a radical fringe take over the Republican Party. And take a listen to what your counterpart, Senator Tim Kaine, had to say just on Friday. Ku Klux Klan values, David Duke values, Donald Trump values are not American values. What's your response to you, I Senator think, Kane? I think Senator Kane's comments, Hillary Clinton's comments uh, uh, on Thursday night uh, uh, sound desperate to me. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't talk a lot about the polls, Jake, but I know the polls are all closing up and, and the fact that you see Democrats uh, and Hillary Clinton and her running mate rolling out the same old playbook of racial divisiveness uh, sounds a little bit to me like an act of desperation. I mean, look, the, the, the American people are sick and tired of politicians who, who seek to divide the people of this country to unite their supporters. Donald, Donald Trump, Trump called Trump Hillary, he called Hillary Clinton out. a bigot. Donald Trump has been reaching out. Well, you just, we just accused her of dividing people. He accused her of being a bigot. Well, look, and that was on the day that Hillary Clinton literally condemned not just Donald Trump by the same terms, but also millions of Americans who long for a better future. In you think country. she was calling all Trump supporters racists? I think she was calling millions of Americans around this country who believe we can make America great again who believe that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's policies have weakened America's place in the world and stifled America's economy. Um, it, it, he's, she's put some sort of racist intention on those Americans. I think that's deeply offensive. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. The American people see right through it these days. And what you have in Donald Trump is someone who's reaching out, speaking boldly from the party of Lincoln, particularly to African Americans and Latinos in this country, and saying, it doesn't have to be this way. Mm -hmm. It can be better. I mean, think of the heartbreak in these communities. To, but be, it, to be living in our inner cities, which, which many African-American families uh, for now generations have been in neighborhoods with failing schools, unsafe streets, no jobs and opportunities. I mean, we're, we're standing today on the 53rd anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of the heroes of my youth. I, I walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with John Lewis on the 45th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. I, I think the, the progress in the civil rights movement is one of the great, great accomplishments That's said, so, so, so I understand the, that that means but, a lot to you, but, but, but the but reason- look at, look at the reality, look at the reality in the minority community today in many of our cities. I was walking through neighborhoods in Indianapolis just a few short weeks ago before this opportunity came into my life with, with, uh, with Reverend Charles Harrison, part of a 10-point coalition. You stand with families on their front porches, they will tell you, the schools are failing and they won't give us educational choice. The streets aren't safe and, and we get no change and there's no jobs. Donald Trump believes we can make America great again for every American, regardless of race or creed or color. And the only answer Hillary Clinton and her running mate have is more of the same kind of racial divisiveness and racial attacks. And, and I really think it's beneath the dignity. With all due respect, debate. sir, the, re the reason that Tim Kaine said what he said is because David Duke is supporting your campaign. Take a listen. I'm overjoyed to see Donald Trump and most Americans embrace most of the issues that I've championed for years. That must really bother you. It does really bother me. And Donald Trump made it clear repeatedly in this week that not only does he denounce David Duke, but we don't want the support of people who think like David Duke. But look, look, people see the choreography, Jake, you and I have known each other a while. Hillary Clinton, not on that, but on the two speeches. Yeah. Hillary Clinton has a really tough week, right? 15,000 emails sure. coming out. I mean, you have the Clinton Foundation, the more and more of the cascade of controversies coming out of here with, a, with the Clintons, uh, you know, ducking and weaving and not answering questions. More than 250 days since a press conference. 
So all of a sudden, here it comes. They roll out the politics of division with a speech Thursday night, and then a running mate comes out with those outrageous charges. That, I mean, the fact that, that, that an individual, a contemptible individual like that, as supports my running mate, is no more relevant than the fact that the father of a man who killed 49 people in Orlando, Florida, was cheering Hillary Clinton at one of her rallies. I know you want to talk about the Clinton Foundation. Let's take a very quick break. We'll come back, and then we'll talk about that. I know you have some issues you want to discuss. Stay with us. Hillary Clinton's corruption has been exposed again. Her Clinton Foundation slush fund sold access to the State Department. A new web ad from the Trump-Pence campaign, and here to talk about it and much more is Governor Mike Pence of Indiana, Donald Trump's running mate. Um, what is the point exactly you're trying to make about the, the Clinton Foundation, and can you point to any actual evidence that as Secretary of State, she actually changed a policy because of this access that donors allegedly had? Well, it's a fair question, but uh, uh, access is also very valuable. And this week we learned from the Associated Press that more than half of the individual meetings that Secretary of State granted uh, uh, during her, uh, her tenure. Not including to, government officials or foreign officials. Well, of course not. These are yeah. individual meetings yeah. that she has discretion over. More than half of those meetings were granted to individuals who contributed tens of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Look, you know, this has been unfurling in front of the American people, particularly over the last few weeks. This week we found out 15,000 emails she didn't turn over. Uh, we also learned uh, from uh, congressional investigation that uh, these so-called emails on, uh, uh, on, on wedding plans and yoga, uh, she eradicated with some high-tech software called BleachBit, which completely eliminates the capacity in most cases to recover them. Um, you know, the simple fact is this is uh, becoming more and more clear uh, through direct evidence in these emails that State Department officials under Secretary of State Clinton uh, were extending uh, access uh, and special favors to major donors of the Clinton Foundation. Can you point foreign, to any favors, though? Foreign donors of the Clinton Foundation and major corporations. And your viewers should be reminded here that foreign donors cannot contribute to presidential sure. or federal campaigns. And so this becomes a conduit for people to gain access uh, and, and gaining access is a favor, uh, mm -hmm. Jake. Mr. Uh, Trump's foundation gave $100,000 or so to the Clinton Foundation. Sure. Was he trying to gain access? Was he trying to gain a favor? I think Donald Trump's made it very clear that through the course of his career, he supported a broad range uh, of initiatives and policies. Just this last week, he contributed $100,000 to a little church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He didn't do it publicly. You people found out about it. But when we were down there visiting families a little more than a week ago, he was impressed with the work that that church was doing. Right, Reverend, but why did he Reverend give money Franklin to the Clinton Graham Foundation? Was doing, and he just very quietly in the car said, I'm going to send $100,000. But you're not comparing that to Mr. Trump's foundation giving money to the Clinton Foundation. Well, I, I'm just saying Donald Trump. I, 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 know, I know we want to make Donald Trump the issue on every issue. No, you're, making, you're talking about the Clinton Foundation. I'm talking about the Clinton Foundation. I'm talking about foreign donors and corporate donors to the Clinton Foundation who the Associated Press this week was able to confirm were, were more than half of the meetings, private meetings the Secretary of State granted during her tenure. And, and then we found out this week remarkably, and this, is, this just, I think, is in, incredibly uh, troubling to the American people. We found out the State Department now, even though they've been ordered to do it, will not provide the balance of her calendar mm -hmm. until after the election. You know, this is, this is, a, 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 this is an example of pay-to-play politics the American people are sick and tired of, and it's what Donald Trump and I are going to bring to a crashing end that you, he becomes president. But you can't point to any policy change. You said the access is the important thing. Well, I think that's the reason why we need to, we need to have an independent special prosecutor in this case. You were talking... The FBI, you know, you know a couple of months ago, the FBI wanted to initiate a public corruption investigation into the Clinton Foundation, and senior officials at the Obama Justice Department shut it down. They said they looked into it a year before and, they, and that there wasn't enough well, there. Well, we heard it was reported publicly the FBI thought about opening a public yeah, corruption. Yeah, CNN broke the story. And I, I commend you for that. But my point is that now this is exactly what the independent special prosecutor statute is for. Okay. The administration should appoint a special prosecutor. And frankly, and one other thing on this, for the Clintons to say that if she's elected president, they would recognize a conflict of interest in the Clinton Foundation and so would be stepping away from it, former President Clinton. If, if it would be a conflict of interest when she's president of the United States, why wasn't 
raising money from foreign donors a conflict of interest when she was Secretary of State of the United States of America. I mean, this, the American people okay. see what's coming here. I want to. Uh, they're going to get more of the same if Hillary Clinton's elected. President I, I want to ask United you a few States. questions. One is you talked about the inner cities. Um, there was a tragedy <clears throat> in Chicago on Friday. Nikea Aldridge, the cousin of NBA star Dwayne Wade, was shot and killed by pushing her infant child in a stroller. Donald Trump's reaction to the news was this tweet. Dwayne Wade's, Dwayne Wade's cousin was just shot and killed walking her baby in Chicago. Just what I have been saying, African Americans will vote Trump, will vote Trump. I, I know that since then he's made an effort to express sympathy and empathy. Um, but that initial tweet, do you think that was a, a presidential reaction to a tragedy? Well, right after that, he is issued his, a tweet expressing his prayers and his thoughts and his condolences. But this is a pattern. Nike when Aldridge there's a tragedy, he sends a tweet talking about how this oh. is going to help his campaign. Look, can I, can I just make the point? A lot of you people in the media spend more time talking about what Donald Trump said and tweeted uh, in the last three days than you do focusing on what the Clintons have been up to for the last 30 years. So that, let me just stipulate to that. On this, look, the, Donald Trump has a plain spoken way about him. And, and the, the tragedy of a mother pushing her child on, in, on the streets of Chicago, being shot and killed as Nikea Aldridge was, just breaks my heart. You've got a little one at home. We, we raised three kids. It's just unimaginable. But it's on top of the more than 2,700 shootings in Chicago. Right, which this is year. why so many people and were Donald offended Trump, when his reaction was vote Trump. Well, I don't. The point Donald Trump is making is that we have a choice to make this fall. You can go with the party that has been responsible for the liberal policies that apparently have been content with unsafe streets in. Barack Obama's hometown of Chicago, where 2,700 people have been shot this calendar year alone. Law you enforcement fail- in Chicago says a lot of those guns come from your home state. You have failing schools. Well, you have tremendous gun control in Chicago, let's be clear. But not in Indiana, and a lot of them come over the border. That's well, what Chicago police okay. say. I, I, in Indiana, we know what most Americans know is that, law, that, that firearms in the hands of law-abiding citizens makes our communities more safe, not less safe. Not so, those guns that go over the border. I know the, I know the president wanted to wants to blame shift to Second Amendment I'm just rights saying what Chicago that. police say, but I want to ask you the a question. The truth of the matter is, Donald Trump is laying out in that tweet, in short form, and there's, what, 140 characters, that we have a choice to make as mm-hmm. a country. We can continue with the leadership that has left us with dangerous streets in our cities, failing schools, no jobs, or we can, we can go with someone who is committed to educational choice, for minority families and families all across this country, right. for a commitment to law and order and standing by our law enforcement community, committed to bringing jobs and opportunity and hope to every American, regardless of race and creed and color. Governor, I need to ask you, your newly installed campaign CEO, Steve Bannon, is coming under a lot of scrutiny. There have been questions about a domestic violence arrest. Uh, there's been questions about accusations from his ex-wife of anti-Semitism. Did you know any of this when he was hired? Well, I know, I know Steve Steve Bannon has denied those charges. I know he enjoys a, a very strong relationship with his ex-wife and, and, uh, and their two wonderful kids. I, uh, so, and, and, and Does it I bother also, you at all, those I, charges? I, I, well, I, I also know one other thing. Is I, I know the media loves to chase after these process stories, these staff stories. But when I'm traveling across the country, the American people are focused on their future. They're focused on the fact that this economy, we just rounded down the last quarter's economic numbers to 1.1%. Real Americans haven't seen an increase in their wages in real terms for 10 to 15 years. I mean, I have to be honest with you. As I'm traveling all over the country, people are coming up to me. They are responding to Donald Trump's broad-shouldered, plain-spoken leadership that we can make America great again. We can be strong on the world stage. We can have an economy that works for every American. Uh, and and I, I, think, I think all of these process stories uh, go by the wayside, and this election is going to be decided on One whether more. we go with the status quo, mm-hmm. the failed policies, or whether we embrace real change in a stronger America. One more process question, although I think you might enjoy this one more. Um, debates are coming up. Yeah. Uh, are you preparing for them other than going on this show this morning? Are you preparing, are you preparing <laughs> for uh, a rigorous discussion of issues and other, is- and other, other things? Uh, we are. How are you doing it? We are. Well, we're just, uh, you know, we're... Do you have somebody playing Tim Kaine? Uh, we're, we're talking to some people about doing that. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll be doing probably some practice debates 
uh, in uh, in about three or four weeks. But but for now, it's just a lot of a lot of crack in the books. You know, I spent 12 years in Congress. Yeah, I know. You know, it seemed longer, but uh, <laughs> I spent 12 years in Congress. Uh, but re you know, refreshing and returning to those issues because I've been focused on on leading the great state of Indiana the last four years. But also just just you know, preparing ourselves to take that opportunity to lay out Donald Trump's vision for this country. It's it's a it is a positive vision. It's a broad-shouldered, optimistic vision. And I look forward to being able to share the stage with Senator Kane to do just that. You've been very generous with your time, and uh, and we appreciate it. And thank you so much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Have fun out there on the campaign trail, and good thank luck. You. Coming up next, new details about the Clinton Foundation's future. Can it avoid conflicts of interest if its namesake retakes the White House?